Walking into the grocery store, so many options that we have. From fruits to vegetables to frozen goods to dry goods to the different variety that we have. All at our fingertips. To our farmers, to the seeds that they implemented in the ground, we can truly all thank one person for this glorious phenomenon. Hello, my name is Denea Elwood. I am a freshman at the University of Delaware. And today, my obscure but phenomenal moment will be George Washington Carver. For my obscure yet phenomenal moment in black history, I've decided to talk about George Washington Carver. Like most children around this time, George's exact birthday isn't known. But based on the information I gathered, he was born between the years of 1860 and 1864. He was born enslaved in Diamond Grove, Missouri, but this was before the American Civil War in 1865. His family consisted of a mother named Mary, a father named Gills, George, a brother named, named James, and supposedly three sisters. His family had been owned by a couple named Moses and Susan Carver, and at the time, they had been against slavery, but they still needed help on their 240-acre farmland. They had originally bought his mother when she was 13. Due to the circumstances at this time, George's biological family wasn't always by his side. Sadly, at an early age, his father had been killed by conspirators. His mother, his sisters, and him had been kidnapped when he was just a baby just to be sold by in a nearby state. During the Civil War, slave raiders roamed the city of George's hometown, taking enslaved people from their fields and reselling them to make a better profit. Moses Carver hired a neighbor, John Bentley, to retrieve the missing family members, but George was the only survivor. Due to this, George only had his brother James for most of his upbringing. Later on, George and James were adopted by Moses and Susan Carver, and they adopted their last name. Susan had taught the boys how to read and write since there weren't any schools nearby. Unlike James, who spent most of his time working in the fields, George excelled in his teachings as well as music skills. Since he was frail and sickly, Susan had taught him how to do more domesticated things, and George was in the field for his plant research rather than labor. Around the town, he was known as a plant doctor. For the next decade, George lived with the carvers expanding his knowledge. At the age of 11, George left Moses and Susan's farmland to attend an all-black school 10 miles away in the city of Nassau. During this time, George had lived with Andrew and Maria Watkins. They were his first African-American parents that he had had in a while. They supplied George with a roof over his head, while Maria expanded his knowledge on medicinal herbs and her devoured faith, while he does household chores. Though this did not last very long, he realized the schooling that he had received in Nassau was not the best. So in 1970, he moved to Kansas and joined in other African Americans who were moving west because they were disillusioned by the failure of reconstruction and a vast migration to Kansas. For the next few years, George had spent surviving off his domesticated skills that he had learned by Susan. George graduated from Minneapolis High School in Minneapolis, Kansas. George wanted to further pursue his education, so in the 1880s, he had applied to Highland College in Kansas. He was accepted into the university, but after more research and sight, he was rejected. This was simply because he was a black man trying to seek education 
and decided to attend an all-white college. Later on, George moves into Indianola, Iowa, and he befriends a white couple who deeply encourages him to apply to a nearby college, which he later accepts into. While attending Simpson College, he decided to study many things, but majority of it was arts and piano, since he, it was an interest as a kid. One of his teachers found out about this and strongly encouraged him to change his studies. They were skeptical about the arts and piano because there was a chance that a black man earning a living from this was very low. Eventually, he transfers to Iowa Agricultural College and switches his major. This is just the beginning of his discoveries. Once George Washington Carver graduated with a bachelor degree in 1894 and a master degree in science in 1896, and later decided to move out of Iowa to Alabama. In Alabama, Carver taught at Tutsky Normal and Industrial Institution in the new facilitated Department of Agriculture. Carver's main focus at the time was to improve other African Americans' useful skills. His main ideals were conciliation, compromise, and economic development as the path for Black advancement in American history. While working as a teacher, Carver also faced many discrimination while working at Tutski, Carver was often faced with discrimination over and over, but he did not let that stop him. Carver continued to teach at the university for the rest of his teaching career alongside the famous educator and author Booker T. Washington. As Carver taught, he also made time for his research projects. He wanted to help farmers in the economic situation. At the time, the soil in the South was not in good condition for agriculture and growing crops since the most of the fields were previously used for cotton and the high rate of erosion in most areas were threatening. The only way to fix this problem was to conduct experiments in soil management, crop production, and direct an experimental farm. After all of his experiments, he decided that farmers must plant peanuts and soybeans. By growing nitrogen-fixing plants, their soil could be perverted and be restored from the damages from the former cotton. To help farmers, Carver also invented a horse-drawn classroom to further prove soil chemistry and taught the farmers to feed their hogs plant-based foods like acorns instead of commercial feed that can reduce further damage to their land. By using peanuts, soybean, and sweet potatoes, many more food and regular items were produced, such as more than 300 food, industrial, and commercial products from peanuts, including milk, Worcestershire sauce, punches, cooking oils, salad, oil, paper, cosmetics, soap, wood, and wood stains, and different types of medicines like antiseptics and laxative. George Washington Carver was known as the father of agriculture due to his soil fertility, but we should know him more than just that. We should give him the more credit that is due, and we should acknowledge without him, the things that we know and love today would cease to exist. Unfortunately, George Washington Carver passed away January 5th, 1943, and he was rewarded a statue to remember his phenomenal work and his impact that he has on agriculture today.